Hi guys, this is Vaish from Vaish IAS and uh, we are going to continue the regular answer writing series that is the raw series day 2. Day 1 we have got uh, quite a good feedback that's why we thought we will continue. So uh, we have done uh, 3 questions that day and today again we will do 3 questions. So basically these questions are posted on our Facebook page, the link is given here Vaish IAS and there we have an album where we will have um, images. I think for day up to day 37 we have done, we have posted questions and students used to answer uh, in our Facebook page and we used to give back the review that was the system we used to follow now because we have started the YouTube channel we are trying to give answers for each of the day okay so day one was done now day two is here now after this video you can go and see the image for day three so that the questions you can try before we present the video okay that is how you can practice and I want you to practice every day because we are writing it here on paper just like you and that is the same thing which we are using for presenting okay because we don't want to simply type and waste time because writing will help us also so uh, try to make use of this session very effectively because these next two to three months should be dedicated for answer writing whatever you study write it okay it will be very useful all these a4 size papers which you are gathering will be very helpful after your prelims is complete obviously when you prepare this way prelims is also possible to achieve anyway for mcqs also our facebook page is doing the job so both prelims and means we are going to take parallelly so let's begin today's uh, session these are the three questions and all these questions like I told it was framed long back so it may not be relevant in the actual uh, way it is framed okay anyway we are going to uh, focus on the content or the core uh, thing which is asked so here it is basically asking the appointment and removal of judges in India and um, NJAC so NJ so it's obviously referring to the higher judiciary the Supreme Court and High Court and why NJAC was repealed okay so this both together is actually a very big question because NJSE also can be asked for 15 marker and uh, judges part also can be asked separately for 15 marker so uh, this question we will try to just go into the actual content of appointment removal and NJSE rep uh, repulsion only we won't go in depth about what is NJSE and how the articles are modified and all those things that we will do in a separate video then second is about the river dispute this again was a uh, question framed uh, long back so now the amendment bill has come for river dispute so we will focus on that while discussing this okay and Prakash Singh case, it's a very famous case uh, for the police reforms. It is asked multiple times by UPSC and uh, even today in every model uh, questions, any mock test you go, this question will be definitely there in one of the paper. So we will discuss this also. So three things, let's uh, begin one by one. Before that, this is again the Facebook page and please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Turn on the notification on Facebook page because MCQs, we are posting five questions every day. If you turn on the notification, five, ten minutes you spend on this page, solve those questions. 5 questions a day up to uh, June 3, just imagine how many questions you will be doing. So it will be very helpful for your prelims practice. Now let's uh, begin. Let me just zoom it. Okay, so we will uh, start with the appointment and removal of judges in India. So Supreme Court, these things are actually taken from Lakshmi Kant, the theory part. I will be linking it with current affairs. So Supreme Court and High Court appointment and removal. So first I will start with the court. Supreme Court of India has more powers than any other Supreme Court in the world. This was told by Alladi Krishnaswamy Iyer who was a part of the drafting committee of the constitution. Okay, under B.R. Ambedkar. It's given in your polity textbook in the Supreme Court chapter. I think chapter 25. Um, so because this, we have a lot of content to write, we will not go for a big introduction. We will just write a one liner like Indian constitution provides for an integrated judiciary with Supreme Court on the top and High Court subordinate to it, okay. So integrated judiciary means this thing. Independent judiciary is a different thing, okay. Independent judiciary is uh, the separation of powers between legislature executive judiciary. That is independent judiciary thing. This is integrated, that is different levels are there. And they are following the same laws, same set of laws. And this is borrowed from the Government of India Act 1935. The other concept, independent judiciary is borrowed from USA. We should know that, okay. The table is given in Lakshmi Khan. Anyway, we will also put in our uh, series someday. So because match the following questions used to come from where it is borrowed. So that is the basic introduction. Now we will see the appointment process of both the courts. Okay, we will do it in parallel so that it is an easy uh, way to write and also examiner will see it in one shot. So it will be beneficial, beneficial for you. So both the judges like in both the Supreme Court and High Court, even the Chief Justice and the other judges are appointed by President. Okay, that is common. Now we will see how the Chief Justice and how the other judges specifically we will see. So Chief Justice is appointed after consultation with such judges in the Supreme Court or High Court that the President would seem necessary. So he will consult which he feels necessary, any judges over there and based on that Chief Justice of India will be decided. 
same in high court the chief justice of the high court will be appointed after the this appointed cgi consultation with the appointed cgi the governor of the state two people are consulted so that is how chief justices of the supreme court and high court are appointed by the president now the other judges other judges obviously the cgi will be consulted and other again the other schc judges which the president feels necessary okay so it's again the same set of people but here cgi also will be included same way here that uh, already appointed cgi already appointed cgh and governor of state these three will be consulted so this is how appointment is done but how did it actually evolve or what is the actual collegium collegium system which is in which was in controversy two years back okay so we'll see three judges cases were there in 1982 1993 and 1998 okay first judge second judge and third judge case it is called famously it is given in polity lakshmikanth also um, so first it's like consultation was not binding that this consultation which president is doing it is not binding it is just a asking of view points and president can decide whatever he wants that is what earlier it was decided same in the high court also second judge case it became binding okay president definitely has to ask the cgi okay same in the high court and uh, he used to take the advice of two senior judges so collegium system is slowly slowly developing okay by the third judges case it be, what it became is like it became definitely binding and the collegium was formally formed with cgi and four senior most judges so this is definitely this five people has to be consulted and only then appointment has to be made so see if not sent if two say no so out of this five if any two is like saying no that person should not be appointed then president cannot appoint okay that much powerful the collegium system was okay judiciary is um, appointing their officers themselves president is just for name sake so this is the collegium system same thing in uh, high court if you see first two judges case same not binding binding and cgi should consult at least two senior most judges so it is cgi plus two judges here it is cgi plus four judges that is the basic difference and this is how both are appointed almost the same thing just a slight difference so that is why i put it this way if we have done separately it would have been difficult to understand now it would be clear in your mind now we will see the removal so removal actually constitution gives same pro, uh, process for both okay so we have to write only one thing okay chapter 25 and chapter 30 in lakshmikanth you have to read after this um, we'll try to try to make a video also for that once we start the polity series uh, judges from supreme court and high court can be removed in the same way as enshrined in the constitution that is by the president on approval from the parliament okay so parliament approval is needed it's not two third majority actually it is special majority special majority means two third majority of the people present and voting and a simple majority of the total strength of the house okay we are not going to details about what is the strength what is the count and all that we'll see in polity series but special majority by the parliament president will approve and finally they will be removed okay this, this is the only thing mentioned in constitution and on grounds also on what basis proven misbehavior or incapacity this is the only thing mentioned in constitution but the process is not there so the process actually parliament can decide that is what the uh, constitution told so that impeachment procedure is regulated by an act which the parliament passed later judges enquiry act 1968 okay so constitution gives only this basic thick structure the actual process will be by an act judges enquiry act 1968 the very simple act uh, to understand for both supreme court and high court same thing so the removal motion signed by 100 lok sabha members or 50 rajya sabha members given to the speaker or chairman so whichever house it is they can initiate the process it's not like only lok sabha can do they will initiate the process give a motion to the speaker or the chairman they that person can either adopt it or reject it it's up to him okay he has that power if it is adopted a three member committee is formed and that committee will have supreme cgi of the I mean, chief justice of india the supreme court or any judge of the supreme court because what if we have to remove the cgi itself then we cannot put him in the committee right so that time a judge of the supreme court will be there and a supreme uh, sorry a high court chief justice anyone and an eminent jurist okay that is who is well versed in jurisdiction and all those things so three member committee is formed now they will do an enquiry and if found guilty the house takes up the impeachment so this is the committee which is deciding everything okay and the, this will take uh, impeachment uh, will be started and again a special majority will be done so that is what this thing actually we are putting in step by step that's all this is the what this is the thing which constitution tells and these four steps are the ones which parliament framed it to implement it that's all so if passed by 2 by 3 that is by special majority it goes to president finally president will remove the judge so appointment and removal both are done by the president whether it be supreme court or high court now the different other things like uh, oath 
work taking ceremony or the salaries and all those things are polity part we'll do it in polity this question is only about appointment and removal and we have covered it now what was the controversy and what was njac it actually stands for national judicial appointment committee this was a problem like the executive or the legislature tried to interfere into the uh, this process the collegium process because it had a lot of problems uh, it was not at all transparent because they will do something from internal part th their judiciary section and they will appoint someone nobody is knowing what is happening internal so to bring in transparency the present government tried to bring this once they came to power so we'll see some details njac was established by union government by the 99th constitutional amendment this is now repealed actually it was supposed to be a six member committee with three from the supreme court and three from the government okay we have if economics you have learned monetary policy committee also was formed something like this three from rbi and three from government same model they tried it here three from supreme court and three from government so cgi two senior most judges okay same like in monetary policy committee rbi and two deputy governor so here it is cgi and two senior most judges and the union law minister and two eminent persons it is it's not two eminent judges two eminent person okay so center will some simply appoint someone telling like they are em eminent personality and uh, these eminent personality two people to elect them they had a or to nominate them they had a, their internal committee where cgi uh, prime minister and leader of opposition will be there okay so these three will decide the eminent personality then this thing so 2 plus 1 3 3 plus 2 5 5 plus 1 6 six member committee now what is the function function is to have the appointment and transfer both of judges in higher judiciary that means supreme court and high court so this is why they framed this thing okay they, they just decided all these things within their legislature they are not talking to the judiciary now they just framed this they put for voting and the bill will be passed and it will be coming into picture coming into act okay 99 constitutional amendment act but judiciary obviously will not be happy because they are interfering so what happened is supreme court struck down njac and 99th amendment okay struck down this thing and stating it as unconstitutional and void after scaor it is actually supreme court advocate uh, on records association or something it's a association of the supreme court advocates okay they challenged it in the supreme court and that is how supreme court took this up and it was repealed because they told it's unconstitutional we'll see what is the reasons they gave NJAC undermines the primacy of Supreme Court and affects the separation of powers. These are the two important reasons they give. One is the Supreme Court's primacy, that supreme power is taken away by bringing in NJAC and also separation of powers. Executive and legislature is trying to interfere in judiciary. So there is no separation of powers, right? So these two are the main things. Little more points about it. It affects the independence of judiciary. Also, government can be litigant in most cases. That is, government itself is there as a culprit in most of the cases, right? Then, if they are itself coming in to uh, form the judge, judges in the court, then how can case be done against them? That was one reason they gave. Because, see, uh, I think here it's given. And thus, inclusion of law minister. Like, there is a case, and law minister is coming into this thing. He is obviously representing the government. So, the judges he select will be, or the way uh, uh, collegium system will function will be, too poor okay collision system means in the new one the njac thing so that is why it is totally unacceptable also no qualification mentioned for this eminent persons which we told earlier eminent persons can be anyone so they could have lack of knowledge about judicial things it provided for veto power also to government so it's like out of that six member this government had also veto power so obviously judiciary was not at all happy and that is why it was rejected by supreme court now how will we end this this is the basic thing you can expand it a little more but to accommodate everything in 250 words or 150 words, I try to give you the exact points alone. When you write it, you can just increase the flow or improve the flow. So though the Supreme Court struck down NJAC, it acknowledged the fact that existing collagen system had flaws and need reforms for better efficacy. So it is now open for recommendation from government and citizens. This is the status now. So this is how you should conclude. You are not blaming anyone. You are just telling what Supreme Court told. It rejected it, but it has already ex accepted the fact that collagen system has problems and so we are open for any reforms but don't interfere that is their problem so this is the first answer i hope it's clear we'll go to the second one so this was about the river disputes like i told we'll focus more on the new bill interstate water disputes hinders cooperative federalism and provides a parochial mindset that is a narrow mindset making regional issues about nation since independence, multiple river disputes are in occurrence across the length and breadth of India. And you can give some examples. There are river disputes almost everywhere in almost every river in India. But the most uh, recent one or the most violent one was Kaveri. That is why we told region issues are becoming 
more important than nation okay tamil nadu if you see most of the issues are like that whether it be jallikattu or anything they will see the state above nation in terms of these kind of things okay they are very much related to their culture and origin it is actually good but sometimes it also challenges the uh, unity or the federal cooperation okay so this is the basic introduction this some things are happening and we give you give an example now we'll give the constitutional provision article 262 confers power to the parliament to make laws for the adjudication of river disputes the par again article is giving the power to parliament there is nothing specific given in the constitution as such okay they are just telling parliament can do it same way like the removal of judges we saw now two laws are uh, two laws which the parliament obviously will make after this is river boards act 1956 and interstate water dispute act 1950 so if you see it's very old okay more than 50 60 years it is now present mechanism individual tribunals are set up for each river each river dispute no timeline or deadline fixed no age limit for com, uh, for chairman members and cases are pending over here so if you see as per these act it's like there is no age limit or there is no proper uh, formal procedure okay they'll just whenever a problem is there they form a new tribunal and assign it no time li- time limit no deadline nothing that is why for years and years the cavalry issues has been pending so this is the present mechanism so to overcome all these things a new bill introduced interstate water dispute amendment bill 2017 okay so this a question is definitely meant to come because whatever bill is coming in 2017 you have to make a note okay we will be covering in each of the videos but uh, this is the first one make a pick and make a note center will be the provisions okay center will set up a dispute resolution committee okay one common committee dispute resolution committee to resolve the dispute amicably that is properly peacefully uh, so period will be one year so now a deadline is being fixed fixed okay giving one year time to the committee and tell like submit the report back to the center do the investigation or whatever you want to do and then give us back the report in one hour maximum sorry one year maximum um, set up single permanent tribunal for adjudication if dispute is not resolved by drc that is dispute resolution committee then benches will be constituted under the tribunal so it's like benches are formed instead of forming different different tribunal like if we have a criminal case or a murder case we won't create new new supreme court right under supreme court different different benches will be there same way under the dispute resolution committee or the permanent tribunal same tribunal small small benches will look into multiple issues and there also time limit is there the bench has to give resolution in 2 years so one year first and then two year will be given maximum can extend to one more that is one more year extra can be done three years the requirement of requirement of decision of tribunal to be published in official gazette has been done away with so initially i think there was a provision for uh, publishing it in official gazette that is actually taken away this is the change which happened in uh, this uh, amendment now chairman earlier there was no age limit but now it is like 5 years uh, uh, the duration term or uh, 70 years of age that's for chairman what about vice chairman vice chairman uh, age limit is not mentioned vice chairman and the member but the duration will be coterminous with the adjudication so if they are solving it in 2 years and the case is over his role is over okay that is how vice chairman is uh, decided transparent data collection system at national level for each river basin agency to maintain data bank will be appointed by center center will appoint a transparent agency which will collect all the data over the years what all happened what are the uh, actual uh, units of water there or how much should be allocated the geographical uh, data scientific data everything will be cal- collected and maintained in center in a proper database i think today we don't have it for every river so everything is going to be streamlined this is the main provisions of interstate water dispute amendment bill amendment bill 2017 now we we'll see the advantages obviously when something good is something new is there there should be some benefit so single tribunal and uh, drc mechanism provides central institution institutionality okay this water is a state subject and now if this is happening center will have little more control uh, deadline is fixed so faster and efficient resolution condition to publication in gazette is removed so so supreme court won't intervene okay so supreme court can intervene only things which are published in the gazette okay so because that is taken away now supreme court won't come and tell like because if you see the cavery issue they have been giving multiple uh, orders like uh, this much should be allocated karnataka should give this much water to tamil nadu or uh, tamil nadu should share with pondicherry they are giving lot of things week after week just to curb the violence which is uh, happening ar- around the uh, states so this thing was taken away bill empower center to make rules in which water will be distributed during stress situations so now the center is having that power to allocate water okay so it will promote culture of sharing 
and this is enough okay for a 10 mark or something you have given more than i think 150 words is there is this answer if you see okay and how we will conclude being a large country with huge population along with constant climatic factors like drought flood el nino etc which is there in the news for the last two years uh, more such steps should be welcomed and implemented effectively for the better sharing of water and thus boosting cooperative federalism so this is how in a positive note you will end your answer any answer you have to tell something like this only where you are supporting the government's policies okay don't criticize the government you can show the negative sides and challenges but never criticize so we see the third question which is again very important one and it's a very repeated question in all the mock test prakash singh case police reforms basically so kiran bedi is one quote first ips officer ips officer of india i know how to work and how to get work done so she was a very daring officer and this is what she told even though system was kind of pathetic in terms of police reforms she was telling like this i know how to work and how to get work done same like how raghuram rajan used to say i do what i do okay that is his saying actually now we'll uh, just give a small introduction and directly go to the uh, seven direct uh, the prakash singh case actually i'll tell you a dedicated honest and modern police system can bring about landmark changes in india in terms of law and order and crime control police reforms in india had always been poor and it is evident from the fact that it is still governed by the indian police code of 1861 so it is still being governed by that convalis code which is formed in the british era okay that itself shows like how poor indian uh, indian uh, government has been maintaining the police force they have not even made a new law several commissions have been appointed from time to time right from Fraser Committee is the 1902 committee, very famous one. You can read about it. To uh, Soli Sarabji Committee, which was I think in 2005. So this is how instead of writing all the cases and simply confusing the examiner, you can just give a timeline range like this. This is a very good way to come to the matter directly. Okay, but all of them failed to create any landmark change in policing in India. So these many cases happened, but nothing worked out. And it was in the Prakash Singh because this is the actual thing which is asked in question. It was in the Prakash Singh versus Union of India case 2006. that supreme court gave an order to central and state government to comply with a set of seven directives this is what prakash singh is all about so prakash singh uh, was a police officer he comes in rajya sabha debate and all watch rajya sabha debate it's very helpful for you um, so uh, seven directives were given by the supreme court this seven things in every study material it will be there every coaching material it will be there it is sometimes we forget so i have ordered it in such a way the order actually in the supreme court judgment is a different way but i have ordered it and underlined it in such a way that in one reading it will be there registered in your mind i'll tell you how seven things they gave us four things are actually setting up different type of bodies okay and two is about the term of the officers and one is simply telling separation of investigation and law and order functions of the police that is investigation should be done by a different team law and order things should be different team so this seven things how to remember first i four i told body so body if you see similar names are there national security commission and state security commission okay and similar way police establishment board and police complaint authority this is what is four points easily you can do so i'll tell you what each body will do constitute a national security commission at the union level obviously national at the union level to prepare a panel for selection and placement of chief of the central police organization so all the higher officers they should be the chief of each uh, body should be from uh, elect, selected by a panel and that panel will be decided by this commission okay so now that is appointment kind of thing that is national security commission now state security commission is to ensure that state government does not exercise unwanted influence or power okay so to curb the overuse of power or exploitation of power state security commission is there so that is for central um, chief this is for state controlling so two things now police establishment board is to decide the transfer posting promotion all those extra things the after appointment those things are decided by police establishment board police complaint authority is for people to come and raise complaints against the police officers okay not other grievances against the police officer itself if you have any problem this is the authority okay so four bodies now it's about the appointment uh, term one is dgp and one is about other police officers so dgp should be appointed through a merit based transparent process and should be given a minimum tenure of 2 years it's not like you appoint and every 6 months you are being transferred for doing something so that is dgp's thing other police officers on operational duty be ensured minimum tenure again 2 year tenure so basically both are same two tenures okay but G dgp again the process is also should be merit based <coughs> last one i told separation of investigation and law and order so this is all the thing which is asked now you have to tell some challenges and then end in a positive note 
So police being a state subject again, there is no common central law being framed. States use diluted version of the Supreme Court directive. So nobody is actually implementing it. Okay, the seven directives. The, the, they are just uh, doing this, doing this by diluting the uh, whatever directives is given by Supreme Court. It's not being followed. Okay, lack of political will, red tapeism, usual things in India. Politicians using police for personal gain. You should know like in most of the states or in uh, villages and all, police is just like uh, uh, acting like even servants to the uh, politicians or the local leaders. You should see movies like uh, Ganga Jal or Jai Ganga Jal in the Bollywood movies. They, they clearly show how, what is the status of the IPS officers who clear all this UPSC exam and going and they are going to work under politicians like this. Just obeying their orders, not even doing anything for the society. Okay, that's a different thing. Now we'll continue. Lack of empathy to grievances of common people. That means they are not bothered about the small, small problems. Anyway, the rich people and all are not going to come to the police station and ask uh, for small, small help. They are anyway do, going to deal anything outside through the uh, political influence. So they are not bothered. That is one thing. Poor infrastructure, police stations, technological assistance. So infrastructure, everything is poor. Uh, no training, no technology, nothing. Huge vacancies, deficient manpower, that is 120 police officers for 1 lakh citizens. Okay, even the global average is 270, 270 people for 1 lakh, but in India it is 120 for 1 lakh. Difficulty to persuade each state to form a model act. Okay, because it's a state subject, state only have to do something, center cannot do. So state is not um, making any model act. Actually the Sarovji committee which we discussed earlier on top, uh, they, he actually suggested a model act, but because of center state uh, not cooperating together it couldn't be formed so these are the challenges now we'll see a positive note to end recently the government has gone forward with a welcome move by giving approval to umbrella scheme of modernization of police forces if you are following current affairs this has happened very recently okay for the years 2017-18 to 2019-20 three years okay by outlaying a financial amount over 25,000 crore shared by both the center and state i think 18,000 by the center and rest by the state the umbrella scheme covers all the aspects of internal security, law and order, investigation, women safety, infrastructure. So I think there's nothing left. Everything is covered. Like our uh, second green revolution, which was trying to solve entire agricultural problems in India. Here, modern police forces like mod mod what is it? modernization of police force. This is the term MPF. This is trying to solve all the problems altogether by allocating this much fund. Now we have to wait and see whether it will be actually passed and implemented. Uh, it is expected that MPF will go a long way to boost the capability and efficiency of control and state, sorry, central and state police forces. These lines actually I have taken from the PIB, okay, this conclusion. PIB, if you simply read for this uh, search in Google for the police force modernization, you will get the exact same lines. I hope you are reading PIB because uh, every time someone won't tell you uh, the actual contents in PIB, okay, they will just summarize it. But make use of these kind of lines. This is the exact line from the PIB. So this is the three questions which we discussed. Uh, now please go and read the three questions for day three. We will come up with that video I think on Monday only, Saturday, Sunday maybe. I uh, will try to start some other series. I think polity we have to start. Economics we have already started. Ramesh Singh one textbook, one chapter was there. Chapter 8, Agriculture which is very important for GS3 and excellent feedback has been coming for it. So we will continue that also. So please uh, make use of this thing because we are putting a lot of effort because nobody I think is giving you points in this way like an actual answer in UPSC. This is what you have to do every day if you do easily you can be even in the toppers list of UPSC okay just dedication is needed 4 hours 5 hours how much ever time you are studying every day use it effectively the more the efficiency the better will be the output simply for simply getting all the books and uh, reading a lot of uh, what's it, online articles, watching videos won't help. If you personally don't write it in the exam hall, all this time which you have spent would be an utter waste. I'm not telling to discourage you, but I'm telling because we know aspirants who have been trying very hard but failing every year, okay? Just because they didn't do the practice in the right time. So start now, it's December only, we have time till June. Let's finish off all the topics in the syllabus and we'll do a wonderful job in the exam. So till we come up with the next thing, uh, again uh, just uh, join uh, our Facebook page this is the telegram uh, channel also many of you have asking for this and MCQs details I have always been giving try to buy it everybody who have bought has given excellent feedback most people keep asking different kind of queries about it I don't know same thing they are going on asking but finally they won't buy there are students who have bought all the things and everyone has, they are even happy and they are asking for the rest of the PDFs of the new new PDFs which you are developing because like current affairs and all 400 MCQs are, MCQs are there okay ready 
but we are again making the fifth PDF with again 100 MCQs. So they are asking like, please make it fast and again send it. So they are ready to buy because they know the quality of the questions. So you also, if you want buy one sample, any one subject like 69 rupees for one subject, buy one, see the quality and then only buy. I'm not going to force you because it depends on you of how to prepare for the exam. So let's uh, hope for better learning for all. We'll continue soon. Till then, happy learning. Have a nice day. Thank you.